This presentation is a collaborative work between the Institute of Automotive Technology from the Technical University of Munich and the Department of Mechanical Engineering from the Kwana Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Ghana, as well as the Avon Motors Company in Munich, Germany. The authors are Matthias Brenner, Joshua Ampofo, Dominic Fries, and Markus Leinkamp. The paper is entitled Configuration Parameters Within Electric Vehicle Production Strategies in Sub-Saharan Africa. It's a car, e, um, a car mobility case. We are looking forward to your presentation. Welcome to my session. My name is Matthias Kona and I'm from the Institute of Automotive Technology from the Technical University of Munich. The next few minutes I'm going to explain you my paper called Configuration Parameters Within Electric Vehicle Production Strategies in Sub-Saharan Africa. I'm going to show you how we applicated this new method to the ACAR mobility case. The agenda for today is first talking about the potential of automobile production in Africa and afterwards talking about the theoretical background in production strategy development. Afterwards I'm going to explain the basic content of this paper, the method to identify configuration parameters and subsequently how we applicated this new method to the ACAM Mobility project. So let's start with the potential of automobile production in Africa. And to do so, we're going to have a closer look at two geographical regions that are quite similar to Africa. We're going to look at India and China. When we look at the domestic production of vehicles in India and the GDP per capita in India, we can see there is a high correlation between these two numbers. And also we can see over the years represented by the black dots, there is also an increase in the GDP per capita as well as the number of domestic produced vehicles. Looking at China, we can find out that it's pretty the same. So the question arises, how does it look like in Africa? And what we can see is no correlation between the domestic vehicle production and the GDP per capita in Africa. What is mainly because of the unevenly distribution of the vehicle production. So of 900,000 produced vehicles in 2017, most of them were produced in South Africa. So what we have in Africa are small markets with trade barriers and we need to have some kind of possibility to produce economically small numbers of vehicles for our automotive manufacturers. And one of these vehicles to be produced locally could be the ACAR. The ACAR is specially designed for rural regions in Sub-Saharan Africa to provide mobility there, but also to be produced locally. And to do so, we developed a low complex vehicle, which has a ladder frame, an interior and an exterior, which it only needs to be cutted, banded and welded. We were also thinking about the local assembly of this vehicle. So we choose mainly screw and plug connections to connect the ladder frame, the rear axle, the rear drive train, as well as the front axle, the front drive train, the exterior, interior and add-on components. We have also rivet connections and a few adhesive connections. So basically assembly methods with low complexity. And after the development of the vehicle, the question appeared local production should look like and what production strategy will counteract the environmental and boundary conditions in Africa. In the theoretical background we're going to have a closer look at production strategy and its content. A production strategy is part of the business strategy as well as the corporate strategy and these three strategies interact. The production strategy describes the production system the employee, the technology and processes, as well as the organization and the product you want to produce and location operating materials. And the production strategy is about the decision within these parameters. So for example, the degree of automatization. This could be low or high, but it can't be both. So it's a so-called trade-off decision, which is mentioned in the recent and basic literature of production strategy research. 
And for our case, we are going to look at eight authors which are describing production strategies in their work. And first of all, we are going to look at what is their focus, what is their content. And we find out, yes, they are dealing also with the components of the production system, the employee, the technology and processes, the organization, the product, as well as the location and operating material. But when we have a look on how they include external influences, we find out that they're mainly not include these, or they include these just as influence of the sales figures. So external influences are only the sales. Next question is how do they incorporate the product specifics? And here we find out are also not included in a methodic solution. When having a closer look at decision making within these procedures of uh, production strategy development, we find out that these are commonly qualitative and only evaluated by the user. So summed up, there is a missing analysis of least developed country specific location and influencing factors. There is a gap of least developed country specific configuration parameters to describe these production systems. And there is a lack of evaluation and decision making without prior situation knowledge. And to close this research gap, we present a method to identify configuration parameters for least developed country production strategies. And to do so, we ask the three questions. First, what factors affect the production side in developing countries? Second, what requirements are derived from the influences on production side? And third, which configuration parameters of a production are relevant in least developed countries? And if these three questions are answered for the background of our production system components, the employee, the process and technology, the organization, the product and the location, as well as the operating material. So the structure is the influences cause requirements. And these requirements are solved by different configuration parameters. And to make that point clear, we are going to give you a short example. The influencing factor high fluctuation of qualified specialists in developing countries causes the requirement a production in least developed countries must prevent fluctuation or must not be influenced by it. And this could be solved by low process and product complexity in order to shorten the qualification time. In order to find out the influencing factors, we use a basic literature research procedure presented by Okoli and Chapra. And in order to test these findings, we conducted three case studies based on the procedure of Robert Yin. These three cases were a Nigerian consultant, a German NGO called One Dollar Classes, Asian automotive manufacturer. To work out the requirements, we use an adapted method of the requirements engineering process, which was presented in a previous study. It consists of the four phases, requirements discovery, requirements categorization, requirements prioritization, and requirements specification. And with this proceeding from the influencing factor to the requirements, we can define our solution configuration parameters. And to show how this method is to be used, we present in the next slides the application at the ACA Mobility Project. Having a look at the boundary conditions and what we found out in the literature research as well as the case studies, we defined about 100 influencing factors like no vocational training, lack of skilled employees, the requirement of sustainability of technology, the lack of capacity utilization, high scrap rates in developing countries. We assign these influences to our categories of employee, technology and process, vehicle, location and operating material, as well as organization. In the next step, we use these influences to develop our requirements. So, for example, we have the influence of the lack of skilled employees and the lack of learning experience. We have a resulting requirement. The work task must be adapted to the level of qualification of employees. An example from the category of product is the plan for use, as well as the consideration of life cycle. 
often a government regulation. From these influences follows the requirement of at the end of its product life cycle, the product is intended to be further used, either its components or materials. Following this procedure from the influence to the requirements, we develop the specification of our production system. So in the next step, we're going to think of our production system, what kind of configuration parameters may solve these requirements. So let's have a look at the work task must be adapted to the level of qualification of employees. And this could be solved by either factors of the category employee or of the category technology and processes. So for example, of the category employee, the training's location, the training time, the work task complexity, initial employee qualification, as well as the share of foreign white or blue color workers are parameters we have to configure and which can solve the requirement of the work task. But also the quality assurance, the degree of automatization or the standardization may be a solution for these requirements. For our second example requirement at the end of its life cycle, the product is intended to be further used. The number of components is crucial, as well as the modularity, the safety concept, the safety concept of the battery, as well as the battery concept itself. So we can see there are a lot of configuration parameters which can be developed by this procedure, and they are described in detail with their decision range. That means from high automatization to low automatization, for example, in our paper. So, summed up, our goal was a transparent evaluation of the influences on production configuration in Sub-Saharan Africa. Our method was based on the influences. We developed requirements and, and the resulting configuration parameters of a production strategy. The benefit of this procedure is that we can use synergies when we have multi-site planning for different countries, for example, as these influences occur in every country, but on a different level. The remaining is the question how we can link external influences and internal dependencies for multi-site planning. So what you see at the last slide was we can solve the requirements by really different configuration parameters. And we have to evaluate these configuration parameters in order to find out what configuration is best and our strategy should propose. At the end, I thank for joining this session and I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you very much for sending us this video presentation. So the last paper of the second day of the SERP e Global Web Conference 2019 was from the um, Institute of Edit uh, Automotive Technology uh, from the Technical University of Munich, Department of Mechanical Engineering from Kwame, Kuramali University of Science and Technology from Ghana, as well as from the company Evum in Germany. So the, the paper was entitled Configuration Parameters Within Electric Vehicle Production Strategies in Sub-Saharan Africa, the Akar Mobility Case. Thank you very much for your interesting presentation. Now we're going to have a short uh, discussion with the author Matthias Brunner. Matthias, can you hear us? Yes, hello. Great. Thanks again for your interesting uh, contribution to the conference. And there are some uh, questions from our audience to you, and I'm just going to read the first question for, uh, um, start with the first question now. Yes. Um, the commenter stated, it could be very interesting to discuss about how the portrait method, ar method articulates with the usual design process and even system engineering, value engineering or concurrent engineering. Yeah, thank you for that question. I try to answer in a, a short way. Uh, it would be really interesting to, to use these methods all together. But what we want to identify as a special need is to um, have a continuous method coming from the environmental influences to uh, our possible solution and parameter space. So 
this uh, should shouldn't replace the systems engineering and um, other uh, approaches. We just uh, want to contribute um, our method, uh, yeah, to to have a more valued uh, outcome. Thank you for your answer. The second question is related um, to the interdependencies between the parameters you just mentioned in your presentation as well as in the paper. Uh, how do you um, estimate or specify or justify those? Well, the interdependencies are really interesting. So if you um, imagine you have you want to build up your, your production site, you want to configure your system, you Keep in mind um, that you want to have some kind of degree of automatization, for example. But you also need to have uh, to define your product, your product complexity. And the, the product complexity uh, interacts with your degree of automatization. And this also with the possibility um, or the need for you to, um, to train your personnel. So you, um, when you want to find the, the best solution, you need to keep in, in mind what you want to define for your other parameters. So you need to, to challenge these um, relationships. Thanks a lot for your answer. We are looking forward for your future work in this regard. And the next question is also uh, relating uh, to your further intentions or plans for uh, collaboration with uh, developing countries. Are there any uh, upcoming uh, new projects from your side? Yes, there are. We are starting next year a uh, collaboration uh, with um, um, Ethiopia. We want to uh, use our the vehicle which was uh, developed, uh, the ACAR, and we want to, to try to um, yeah support um, agricultural um, work with uh, this um, yeah with this vehicle. So we try to um, establish some kind of uh, ecosystem by creating mobility as well as uh, value adding um, or local value adding. So yeah, there will be uh, a new project upcoming uh, starting next year. Thank you for your answer. Could you also specify a bit the challenges which are maybe different in, develop in working uh, closely with developing countries for a research project? Well, what we have our partners in Ghana, this is a really um, good relationship and it's quite easy to get in touch with them. So there is no um, point where I would, where I would say it's difficult uh, in order to, to work, to collaborate with them. What is a little bit challenging is uh, how to get there. Yeah, you need to, to fly to Accra and yeah, then you take another plane to Kumasi, for example. And um, yeah, that's, but that's in the globalized world of that issue. Thank you. Uh, I would like to ask you as last uh, question, and what are the advantages from your side compared to working with other countries or other institutions? Well, what we find really interesting uh, is about vehicle and mobility concepts and um, production concepts for new um, environments. So we need to talk to people which are in these environments we want to solve problems, we want to, um, to work with. So that's the major point. So all the best for your future collaborations and also thank you for your time. Have a good afternoon. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. -bye.